Okay, uh, let's get uh, started. So you remember uh, two weeks ago, uh, I built the two boxes. So in one box, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's this one. I know the proportion of black is equal three quarters. And uh, for example, if I randomly pick up a five, I wanted to ask, how likely or what's the probability for me to have one black or zero black? You can find that, right? Given the proportion of black in this box. How, how can you find that? Because this number of black follow a given distribution. What the distribution is, is it, it is. No? No idea at all? I have some idea, but I just don't want to see. I think a yeah, uh, lot of little uh, things should be in more involved, you know. You know, you know the distribution, no? What's the distribution of this? B, what does B mean here? Yeah. No, it's a distribution. It's a what, what, what do you mean by black distribution? You mm, got it. The binomial distribution. So for the binomial distribution, we know the proportion of black. We know the number of samples that we are going to draw. And then we can find any probability you ask. You may ask. You may ask me any, anything about, you know, the number of black. It can be a given number or in a range because I know the distribution, so this is the probability. Okay, so last the, uh, uh, time we talked about this box. In this box, the proportion of black, uh, I don't know. But I didn't count everything. In this box, actually, I count everything. I put, it, uh, I put a, a one quarter of a white, three quarters of the black in this box. So I know the distribution, in this box, I just randomly draw some black, some white, and put it here. But I wanted to find it. How could we find it? We needed to draw some sample. We needed to collect some data. For example, again, for the, for, I draw fat. For some reason, I got two black. So then, I mean, this number of black have some information because, you know, this number of black come from the fab, uh, uh, is the proportion in the fab samples. And the fab sample are randomly drawn from this box. So the fab sample, of course, is not everything about this box, but it's a sample. So we can estimate it by the proportion of a black of a two, which is a two here, in the five, which is give me point of four, right? So I got an estimation. But if you draw the same number of uh, samples, you may have another, uh, another estimate. So this is just the estimation. It doesn't mean this estimation is exactly equal to this uh, proportion. We just an estimate, okay? But last week we talk about you know the variance. So how how much we can sure you know the uh, the uh, the unknown value is uh, you know around uh, around this one is based on the variance. Okay, this uh, this week we talk about the hypothesis test. So you, I guess you still remember what are the three words 
about the statistics. At the very beginning of the class, I said that. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, remember that. That's everything about the statistics. Okay, whatever you do can be classified, you know, into one of them. So we talk about the uh, uh, probability. We talk about the sampling. We also talk about the estimation. So today we talk about the testing, or something called the hypothesis in the testing. Now the testing is like this. For example, I wanted to test whether the proportion of black in this box is equal to the proportion of black in this one, which I know. That's a statement, right? So this is a statement I wanted to test. It can be true, but of course, it may be the, the, the P2 may be different with the P1, but it, they can be equal. How can we know? That's uh, the topic of today, okay? No response. Okay. Be focused. You know. Okay, uh, so we uh, we have some mentioned this the law of a large number and the central limit theory. Uh, this are important you know, probability theory. But sometimes it can help us, you know, to understand, uh, you know, why we, uh, you know, we can use this, uh, you know, uh, last week we, we we can depend a lot of, uh, you know, sampling statistics. Once we have the sample, of course, you know, based on the value of k, we can have other other estimation. You can give a square or some machine, you know, the, uh, 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 so we should. Uh, 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 understand that uh, you know why many times the 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 sample mean is a uh, is the best estimation for the population mean. I just basically this is a large number uh, uh, theory tell us. So for for some distribution, I say if, if the population is a normal distribution, of course we can exactly find out what the distribution of sample mean. What's the distribution of sample variance? So, if the population is normal, what's the distribution of sample mean? The distribution of sample mean is also a, a normal, and the variance is equal to population variance divided by sample size. This again is the least thing you should remember. You know, if after this class, you 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 have to uh, some least thing you have to remember. Otherwise, it uh, you cannot see you you have passed this this class. Uh, this is a theory or law actually tell us that for any distribution. Sometimes the population, you know, can be uh, follow a normal, but sometimes uh, we are not sure. So this theory or law tell us, uh, you know, for any distribution, the sample mean is a very good estimation for the population mean. This means what? So what does the e mean here? Expectation. Here it means the expectation. So it's a it's the expectation of the emphasis is equal to mu, which means this mu is the population mu. And what is this? Well, if we have this sample, what is this? It's just our sample. We add them together, divided by sample size. This is a sample mean, or mean of the sample. So for this mean of the sample, it has this property. 
which means you know when when the sample size is large enough, uh, don't be scared with this. It just tell us when the sample size is large enough, the sample mean can be any closer to the population mean. So here is the probability. The probability for you know this is like a, like any closer. The epsilon can be any small. It's a positive number. It can be point zero 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 one or you know can be any small positive number. So this actually tell us because this absolute value can be any small for a a a a, a given you know can be any small, which means it's close. It's closer to the uh, sample size is closer to population mean, and this probability is equal to one. So this should actually tell us the the sample mean when the sample size is large enough can be any closer to the population mean. So which is a, which is a very good probability if we use the sample mean to estimate the population mean. Okay. The central limit theory, many times even the population, well, if the population is normal, we know, okay, let me ask you, if, if the population is a normal distribution, so what is this? Okay. Yeah, sample me, what is this? Yeah. Okay, it's the package of the variable or the population mean. Okay, the population mean. So this is like the the, the sample uh, sample variance. Sample variance uh, is uh, make a square and divided by sample set. So if if the population is normal, what's the di what's the distribution of this one? Mm -hmm. Not just the normal, it's a standard is the normal. I mean this part. So it, it, this like a, we, we said let's have like a centralization or standardization because we take away the population mean and divide it by the standard deviation. So this is the standardization, uh, it gets a mean of zero and the variance of one. So if the population is normal, so this is exactly a normal distribution as well, and with the mean of zero and the variance of one. But if the population is not normal, so which means you know the sample that later we can do some simulation, we can you know draw some random number, not from a normal di distribution, from any distribution, from a uniform distribution, or from a, you know a bad normal distribution, we can find out you know what what the distribution of this guy. So. So this is central limit theory tell us that for any population, so the sample mean, uh, you know, after the standardization, will follow a standard normal distribution. So this is not exactly equal. So it's a, you know, a, a, it's a, a, a approximately when the when the sample set is large. Of course, when sample set is small, there may be some difference, but when when the sample set is getting and the larger and the larger, this one will be can be any closer to the standard normal normal distribution. So that's why you know uh, uh, we, we can still you know uh, even though the population is normal, so because this is a normal uh, distribution, we can still find that you know the interval estimation. We can still find you know the variance of of a sample mean. And we can quantify you know, the property of the sample mean as an estimate to the population mean. Okay, so another one is a, a small probability event. So this event actually uh, uh, help us, you know, it's, it, it actually is a base, basic idea, you know, how we can do the hypothesis test. Uh, so how small is small from you? If it's a, a, if something has a probability ten percent, is it small from your point of view? Do you think point one is a small? Is a small probability? 
Yeah, maybe. Point two is point two small. Probability from zero to one. Of course, we know probably point five. We cannot say point five is too small, right? But uh, for point one or one percent or five percent, well, sometimes we think it's it's small. So ten percent means only happen once in ten times. So it's up to you basically to define how small is small. But as a statistician, we can tell you, you know, if you think uh, some probability is small, we can tell you how likely, you know, you uh, you can make uh, we can make the mistake. Some some people may be very optimistic, you know, if uh, if there's a a a hundred percent chance they wanted to try, and somebody may be, you know, very May, how you say that? May may see the the uh, one chance in uh, uh, one chance in hundred times maybe too low. I don't want to try at all. I don't want to uh, uh, risk and uh, any risk. But if you can earn a lot of money, you know, by a chance in one in one turn, in a uh, uh, one turn, uh, somebody may may want to try. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, this uh, this principle actually tell us uh, you know when when a, an event an event like means uh, something will happen okay if for something happen and the probability is low we call it a small probability event the small probability event because you know sometimes we use the five percent which means one twenty. If we think one percent is small, which means that it can only happen one in hundred times, then we have a reason to think, you know, the small probability event won't happen if we only have one chance, or or we have one try, you know. If, and let, 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 yeah, let, let, let's see we, we do some gambling. If uh, we only have, uh, uh, you know, in one in hundred times the chance, we win a lot of money. And the 90% of the chance we lose, uh, we, we, we lose the money. So we have a reason to think if we only, you know, do the gambling one time, are we going to win, do you think? I'll, I'll ask you to do some prediction. If I do some gambling, but uh, the probability for me to succeed only one percent. I only do the do it once. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what I want to say. So the Please be on time and next time, okay? We get confused with your thinking in one mm -hmm. We were thinking the class was one Ah, oh, really? Okay, and please sit down. You are, you are not really too late because we, we, we just started. Here we talk about the small probability event. So we are, you know, uh, we, we need to have a, a uniform idea. Uh, so the, in one experiment, if some machine only happens once in 100 times, but in one time, it is less likely to happen. That's the deal, okay? We all agree, right? Because you, you have, you know, the one percent chance to win. How could you win in just that, you know, in one try? You can, you can still win. <laughs> so that's why when we when we uh, make uh, some decision in statistics, uh, you know, we, 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 we make a mistake, okay?
So basically, you said that, you know, if I, in one try, I, I will never win. You make some mistake. But the probability for you, for you to be wrong is just 1%. So the probability for you to be right is 99%. Right? You cannot say you are 100% sure. No? Yes. Because there's still, you know, some chance for me to, to win. Okay, uh, but, uh, you know, if we think something have a small probability, but it, uh, it does happen, what are we going to do? If we know some machine have a very small probability to happen, happen. well, but suddenly it happens in just the one try. What are we going to say? What, what are you going to say? No. If, if we, we, we do some gambling and the probability to win the bigger money is, uh, is very low, and you try once, the suddenly you, you, you win. What are you going to say about it? Bad luck. It's bad luck. Yeah. What else? What else can you think? So in statistics, we, sometimes we may say the probability may be not that low. Okay, so this is the logic when we when we do the make a decision. So because of the small probability event have less likely to happen, but suddenly it happens, we may have some doubt about the low probability. Okay, so basically we may have a doubt about this hypothesis. <laughs> Okay, now we talk about uh, uh, with that. With that, we can we can continue with the hypothesis and the testing. So the hypothesis testing. So first, we need to make a, a hypothesis. Uh, so her hypothesis actually is just a statement. Like uh, put, I put it here, I wanted to test the, well, whether the proportion in this box is equal to the proportion in this one, which I know. It's a statement. So the non hypothesis always should be more simple. Of course, you know, if uh, I cannot Maybe for, for the data I have, I cannot, uh, you know, make uh, some uh, rejection at all. It can happen, you know. From the data, I can find all oh, this probability is not that small. So it's normal. It happens. It's normal because the probability is not low. Otherwise, if under this uh, hypothesis, and suddenly if I find uh, it's a small probability event. Well, then I may have some reason to say, well, something is wrong here. Okay, this is a very important, uh, uh, you know, the idea. If you, 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 you are confused with this, basically, you know nothing about the hypothesis test. Okay, am I clear? So here is a hypothesis. So I firstly I assume this is true. And based on the data I have, I can find that the, if this is true, what's the probability and uh, you know if this is true is like I know the proportion here. And like here I can find any probability. 
So basically, when the P2 is, uh, I know P2, and I can find the probability to have two black in the five samples. So if this probability is not small, it's very large, well, then it's not a strange at all. So I have no reason to say something is wrong here. So which means I have to accept it. Or I don't have the enough evidence to say this is wrong or something is wrong. So let's say basically even though even though the, the, it, it is true, I, I can still, you know, the, the estimation here, how much is the estimation here from the two to five is the point of four, okay? The point of four, of course, is not equal to three quarters. But this is just like an estimate. The, the true value can still be three quarters. So which is, if I can find the probability, and uh, if I assume P2 is uh, equal to three quarters, I can find the, you know, the probability to have two black in the fact. Now the question, you know, convert it to a, prob a probability, probability again. So that's why, you know, the probability and the statistics, sometimes it's, a, it's a very hard to separate them. That's why, you know, at the very beginning, why we spend the one week to talk about the probability. If we, we don't know probability, it's impossible to do the hypothesis test. Now it's clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so under this assumption, I find the probability based on the observed data I had. If the probability is pretty high, it pointed to or point three. Well, this can happen. It can happen. Even though P equal to three quarters, there's a big probability, you know, to see only two black in the back. However, if I find you know form the data I have, well I find that the probability is low, maybe just one percent. We, you know, this one person that is under this assumption. So which means a small probability even to happens. If it happens, I may have some doubt about this statement. No? Because a small probability even the normally shouldn't happen. But it happens, which means the assumption is strange. What's the strange? Because we made this assumption, or we made this hypothesis, we make this statement. So this statement is strange. Maybe I should, I cannot, I cannot agree, which means I have to reject it. So for the two hypotheses, basically we need to make a decision whether we accept the non-hypothesis always reject it. So that's the decision. Okay, so for for any capacity test, remember we have a true capacity that, you know, to be tested. One is called is more simple, it's called non-capacity. Of course, if the non-capacity is not true, it becomes this one, right? It's called alternative. So sometimes the non-capacity can be some theory. Okay. As in some genetics. We know some there are some genetic law. And I have a population. I wanted to test whether my population, you know, follow some you know basic uh, 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 genetic law. In that case, you know, the many times the non-capacity is something like a theory. If my sample can be fitted by this theory, well, it's good. But it's not always that something you know we want to test. Okay. 
so the uh, hypothesis test the uh, uh, some sometimes you know we, we may have uh, more variables to test uh, sometimes we only test the one like the here so for the normal distribution it, it has two parameters one is the mean one is the variance so sometimes we, we may want to test the whether this population is the same as the other population so we wanted to test the whether you know the two population mean are equal and the, at the same time the two population variants are equal so that's uh, uh, you know uh, also happen you know yeah 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 many times many times actually uh, this kind of test is not uh, not very normal but uh, some time that you know you can also use but how we how we do the test as I said, we need to we need to find you know under the non hypothesis we need to find the probability for me to have the to have this observed data. So basically, I we need to make a criteria, you know, when to when to uh, uh, when to accept this or when to reject it. So we need to make some some, some, some rules. For example, you know, uh, in the in the famous samples, I find that the black is now. So the P and well now maybe not very good uh, uh, the Y here. The P is equal to point two. So then I can I can think you know this probability may be small. Because you know there are three quarters of black, but in my samples I only observed the twenty percent of black. So maybe if I can make some general rules, then I can find that, of course you know in one experiment k equal to zero, one, two, three, four, five. I can make some some rules, you know. If I have this observed the data or this one, and maybe I think that this is you know it's nonsense you know to assume this is true. Okay. If at this range because the, the probability may be high, well it can happen. So this is a, you know like a summer uh the uh, some region. So first the we we need to make a test the statistic. Which here is just the number of blacks. Well, sometimes you know it can be something else. We need to make a region, which is called the rejection region. Or when we should you know say oh this hypothesis is more or less right. When this one is cannot be correct. Well, uh, of course, basic are uh, you know some, some at some probability level. Of course, if we 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 need to have a rejected region and have accepted region, if the observed data you know in this region, how we say we we what happened? Anyway, okay, uh, so. Uh, we, uh, for any hypothesis test, we need to make, uh, you know, this is like a criteria, which uh, for us, uh, you know, to make the decision. Of course, the criteria is based on a uh, statistic. Uh, the, you remember the three sampling distribution we talked about like not last week. What's the three sampling distributions we talked about last week? T, T square, F, so all those uh, sample, uh, uh, sampling, uh, uh, sampling statistics actually can be used as the 
you know, the test that, that is a key here, of course, for different purpose. Uh, some of them, the, when we test the mean, we use the t-test. When we test the variance, we use the k-square. When we test the two variances, we use the f-test. Okay. So when we make a decision, we, we, we can make a some mistake. Okay. If let's say here we make a, a, a decision when we observe the no black or just the one black, how we say this is wrong. But when we say that, we are we hundred percent sure? Not, not really. We cannot be. I mean. Even even though the p p p two equal to three quarter, this can still happen. We can we, we can find the probability. This can also still happen with some probability. So if this is uh, happens, and this value actually we make we made the mistake. So that kind of mistake is called the table one error. I hope you, after this class, you can speak very clearly what is the type one error, what's the type two error. Again, if you are confused with the two errors, you are not really, you know, understand the hypothesis test. No. So the type one error, which means when this hypothesis is true, but we reject the it. Okay, because uh, you know when we, uh, when we when we think uh, uh, when we see no black and one black, uh, we we see this is less likely happen. So we reject the it, but actually this can be true with some probability. So that probability is to call the type one error. Also, it's a false, uh, false positive. Okay, it's a false positive because we say it. This if we sometimes this like a form of you know the disease from medicine. So this is like a you know the the uh, we call it the, the 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 negative. Okay. Let's say you go to the hospital, uh, you go to the hospital, uh, hospital or you, 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 you maybe you don't have any disease at all. But sometimes some you still, the doctor said, oh, you, you go to some machine. But that's wrong. What error is it? You don't you don't have that disease, but you you are diagnosed that to have it. That's a type two. So the type one is uh, you. The type one is the the doctor said basically you know you don't have the disease and. Uh, yeah, the doctor said that you have it. Another one, you know, you can have this disease, but uh, let, let's say, you know, this, uh, this is not true. But uh, there's still a bigger probability we see, you know, this number of uh, 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 black. In, the, in that time, you know, we accept that. But actually, this is not true. This is the false. So we accept the, a false statement. So these are the two errors. So first the one is, you know, when the non-hypothesis is, is true, we reject it. Which means that if you don't have the disease, but the doctor said that you have some disease. So this type of two error is, you know, when the non hypothesis is wrong, but we still accept it. So which means you have the disease, but uh, the doctor missed it. 
So this figure may help you, you know, if the non-capacity is true, but due to the random effect, uh, we may make a correct decision. So this is a correct. Capacity is true, and we accept it. This means the capacity uh, else, uh, alternative is true, but we, you know, we reject the non-capacity. We make a right decision. So sometimes, you know, when the non capacity is true, but we failed, we put that, you know, uh, 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 reject it. So that's the false positive. So this is, a, this is another type of error. Of course, when we, when we make the capacity testing, we don't, you know, we want to make a correct decision. You know, we don't want to make any rubbish decision. You know. So we wanted to control the both types of errors. Okay, uh, I think later we will have a uh, come back to this point again, and we uh, 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 next we talk about uh, you know very uh, specific uh, testing. Uh, so the type one error, sometimes we we call the you know the the uh, significant level. So when we when we make the decision, basically we only control the type one error. So the type two error can be pretty high, which normally we don't control. Uh, what we can reduce it is to increase the population size. You know, remember that type two error can be much larger than the type one error. So when we do the hypothesis testing. We only control the type one one error, which means here when we when we make a, a rejection decision, the the, uh, the 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 probability to make the mistake is under either ten percent or five percent. So these are the small probability. You may think ten percent is small. That's fine. Somebody else may think a fair person is small, or somebody think a one person is small. It's up to you. So how small is small, you decide. So don't ask me when we when you do some uh, novel analysis, you know whether I should uh, you know fair person or, 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 or one person. You ask yourself. You know. So basically, it can be judged from you know. How, uh, uh, what's the consequence if you make a wrong decision? So if the consequence is not that serious, it's okay, this, this can be larger. Sometimes if the consequence is very, very serious, of course we want to reduce this, uh, you know, uh, to a very small level. Like now the, you know, the, 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 the code, Coronavirus, okay. It doesn't mean we carry that virus, but everywhere you go, ask you wear a mask, have your temperature measured, because uh, you know, if if we make a one mistake, the series is very bad. So that's why it's equivalent to we use a very small probability, okay. So you can you can catch. So you can think if you can ask your, yourself if if the if if the decision I made is wrong, how serious is the you know uh, uh, how 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 much it cost? Because you know, if 
if we use we we if this probability is small, so many times you know when this is true, we cannot really find it because if 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 we want to control this probability, so basically, you know if. We, if if we if we you know make this decision hundred percent, we don't make any type one error, right? But the type two error is huge. So that's the relationship between the type one error and the type two. So for the same number of sample sets, if we reduce the type two error, type one error, so immediately will increase the type 2 error. If we here, we, 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 we choose a, you know, a higher type, type, uh, type 1 error, you know, the type 2 error, error will be reduced. So sometimes we need to make a balance. So yeah, so that's why you don't ask the statistician you know, to make a balance for you. You make a, a balance for yourself. You know, you make a balance between the type one error and the type two errors, and by considering you know the the, the conse consequence, you know if something uh, goes wrong, like many some of the I tell you, in, in genetics, we find the one gene at the first, and then we want to use that gene you know in the transgenics to trans to use that in many many places. So if that gene is thick, well, which means uh, you know the the consequence is serious. So we have to use a very you know we have to be very strict. We have to be serious. You know we want to make sure what uh, you know this gene is really is it, really can give us more yield. It's not caused by random error. Okay. So sometimes maybe well you just find that gene for for pleasure or for what uh, uh, then you know the, it's okay if it is wrong <laughs> then you know this uh, problem so again the problem made here is uh, you know how small is the small it's uh, it's not really a statistical issue. Okay, so we will quickly go through some tests. Uh, so sometimes we want to test the the uh, the uh, 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 population. Uh, in one population, whether the population mean is equal to a given value. It's similar like here. As I said, you know this this is like a population mean, right? It's a mean. And we wanted to test the, you know, whether the P2 is a proportion uh, is equal to this one. Uh, this is like, uh, you know, the normal distribution where we want to test the, whether the property mean is given to a equal value. So if this is true, if this is true, and also if the variance is known, so the sample mean after the standardization, so this is like a standardization. Because we assume it has a, a, a mean of mu, mu zero and the variance of the sigma. So this is like a standardization. After the standardization, it is a standard normal distribution. So this letter we put a Z test. So once we know this distribution, so for any uh, sample, we can find the sample mean, right? And we can find the whole likely the sample mean is in a, a given range, or how likely you know, the, 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 the sample mean is in, or the probability of the, uh, uh, of the sample mean. And then, you know, we can make a, make a, uh, make a decision. So basically, from the, uh, uh, this test, that there are uh, So 
here we talk about the uh, standard 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 phased normal di distribution. So with a uh, mean of zero and the variance of one. So once we have, let's say, we for for the for some sample, this value, I mean the z value, the z value may be here. So we can find that basically we can find the probability because of here we test the uh, it's, it's a two tail test. So if this is a, my, my sample here, so I can find the, the probability between the minus be, basically is between this region, between this region. So what's the probability from minus x from uh, to x? So that well here uh, maybe I should use the same because the standardization. Uh, so for 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 this one, can it be negative? This I mean the Z. Uh, uh, of course the 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 the, the sum for me well it's based on population. If the population have a negative mean, it can be negative. But what, what what's the possible value for the Z? Can it be negative? Can it be two? Can it be three? How the uh, population will be negative when negative is negative in the equation is negative. It's a standard standard phase normal distribution. So the mean is here. So if it, if it's a if it is only positive, how could we have a mean of zero? So this is the mean of the distribution is zero. If we only have a positive value, how could we have a mean of zero? Well, not really. Actually, the positive value for this one from the negative infinity to the positive infinity. It's here. So it it can go it, 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 it can go any color closer. Okay. So let's say if we find this value and we, we use the, this with this value actually can be both positive and negative. So we use the absolute for example we use the F absolute value. Of course, the absolute value can cannot be negative. So this is the uh, the 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 value we observed. So what is the probability for more in, or in this interval? In this interval, from the ab, a negative absolute value to the absolute value. What's the probability? What's the probability from this point up to this point and the standard is the normal distribution? It's, it's the area of some machine. Area of what? Minus no, I mean it's, a, it's the area. So this is the probability. What's the probability on the, uh, on the left of this line? So on the left of this line, it's the tail, left tail. So we call the, uh, the left tail. So this is the right tail. Now we can find the, you know, uh, uh, the probability between this range. In this range, it's, it's actually this area. With this uh, distribution, if we know Z, let's say maybe it's a 1.5, it's a minus 1.5, we can find the probability from, from a, a, a minus 1.5 to 1.5, right? Well, you cannot find it by pen, but uh, you, now you should be able to find that in Excel. No?
we find that. So now actually, this probability, you know, we, we can also find that, you know, the probability of the two tails. If the two tails is not that small, or uh, let's first consider if the two tails are the small. So which means uh, what? We mean a small probability, you know, event happens. If the two tails uh, is not that small, so we don't see it's a small probability event. We don't see any contradiction between the two hypotheses. Okay, so that's uh, when now actually uh, more and more the hypothesis test that is based on the significant probability. Significant probability actually based on the, you know the two tails. Of course, for some distribution, we only consider one tail, like the k square distribution or f distribution. So this is the z test, and again for the t test. Uh, so it's just an example. The t test, which means you know we don't know the values. The values is estimated by the sample values. Now it becomes a t distribution. T distribution is a, is a similar to to normal, uh, but uh, you know, uh, well, especially when the sample set become a thirty, it's almost identical. When the sample set is more, yeah, it's uh, not really uh, identical. So the T test again find uh, the two tail probability, and uh, if the two tail probability is small, so we reject the non hypothesis. When it's not a small which mean, means we, we, uh, we, we don't have the enough evidence to reject that. So many times the people talk about that there's some tricky in statistics, okay? So if we accept that, it's not uh, exactly equal <laughs> to say they are, this is uh, exactly true. We just, you know, we just, you know, don't have enough evidence, you know, to reject this hypothesis. So many times, you know, the difference can are always there. Let's see if we consider, you know, in this box, what, how many black is there? Uh, at the very beginning, we had three quarters, okay? So, for example, in this box, so it, it's three quarters, P1. But in this box, so I, if I, I only put, uh, you know, the, uh, this, the, this proportion of black, it's very hard. Do you think, uh, can we still, you know, make uh, uh, a very, uh, you know, the, the, the good decision or not? Or if the P2 will be just the point of 0.1. So, so the, the, uh, uh, for the alternative capacity, actually there are many possibilities, right? You know, any, any time, you know, if P2 equals, equal to this one, which means they are not equal. If P2 equals point 0.1, they are not equal either. But for example, uh, in, in this uh, box uh, where I, I, I put, uh, you know, uh, maybe just the 70%. The 7 point approximately equal to 7. Yeah. 0.7 point approximately equal to 7. Yeah, but in theory, it's still, it's, it, it's still not three quarters. I can put, I can count. So I put, uh, you know, 30, 30 white, 70 black. So of course it's not three quarters. But, uh, you know, to test that the difference actually is much more difficult than we test the difference between these two. Do you agree? Uh, agree or not? So if in this box, I only put, uh, you know, 10 percent of black, and I have a third, a third box, I put 70 of black. So, 
how 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 basically here here of course p2 is not equal to p1 but in one case we have p2 the p1 equal to three quarter but uh, in one case we have a point seven in another case we have a point one so the test uh, you know the the the, the test that, you know uh, uh, of F two against the P one and uh, for this one uh, uh, again also against the P one. So which one you think is easier, you know, for us to make the correct decision? Okay, so you get confused with you. No, or oh, you are confused. <laughs> Uh, my point is uh, how easy. So, it, so if I ask you to find uh, whether P two is equal to P one, I ask, ask uh, uh, another person to find uh, whether P two equal to P one. You know, which job is easier? Which job is easier? Yeah, you know that. 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 Yeah, you <laughs> so you may choose, uh, yeah, everybody wanted to choose this one because, uh, you know, the difference is huge. That can be easily identified. The difference here is uh, small. You need to, you know, you need to be very careful. You need to uh, have a lot of observed data and then you can find the difference. Okay, so this is the idea, you know, why this actually, when we uh, use the same curvature, basically the detection power for this one is much higher than this one. You know, for this one, maybe, well, if we, 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 we need a huge sample size to, you know, to, for this one, if we we reject the hypothesis, we, we make the correct decision, you know. We need a huge number of sample sets so that we can reject the non-hypothesis. But for this one, because the you know the difference between point one and the three quarters are huge. We don't need a huge number of sample sets. This job is much easier to be done. So it's statistical as well. It means you know, uh, if the if the alternative capacity is point one, and the non capacity is like like this, so it's easy to to test the, the, the difference or to find out the, the difference. So uh, for this class, actually. I put a lot of formulas here, but I really don't want to get into the formula. So more important that, you know, give you some impression about, you know, the, I think it's more important that you understand the, the, the basic principles. Then remember, you know, some uh, difficulty formulas. Uh, so the, let's get the example. For, for the variance, we have to use the K, uh, uh, K square test, the for K square test, the what's the possible value for the for the K square distribution? Can it be negative? It's K square. Everywhere is a square, so it's impossible. It's non-negative. So for for this one, we. We 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 need to calculate you know basically the the, the you know the the right tail for many times. Okay, so this is just the you know the the simple test the, to test the two mean population mean population variance and the two variance. Uh, here it is to test the the proportion. 
form the, the binomial distribution. So from the <coughs> binomial distribution, of course, it's not normal. So this one actually is not the exact, not exactly follow this distribution. It's just the approximate when we when the when the sample set is large. So here, here, what is the sample set here? What is the sample set in this example? Right, five. Okay, good. Got it. Well, p hat. What's the p hat there? Yeah. Okay. Now, now you are you are making progress. Very good. <laughs> so you know everything. So we know we know p zero. What's the p zero here? What's the p zero here? What is the p zero here on the board? Well, actually, I take it out. So this is the p zero. Okay, we want to test. So basically, here is that once we have the sample, we have everything here. We have p hat, we have p zero. Here, of course, equals y minus p zero. We have n. We can find the value of this. Uh, we call the test the statistic, right? And then. We can find that you know how likely this could uh, can happen. Or oh, in the old time, when I was a student, you know, we don't have a computer as good as this. Uh, we have to check uh, at the end of the test the book. We tend to check uh, you know under five percent what's the critical value. And now you are very lucky. So and actually now when you publish, now it's. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we 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 don't uh, you know they they are equivalent but uh, uh, in the uh, normal publications this uh, is used less often more likely we just find out the significance probability and we compare the significance probability with the significance level which is five percent or one percent okay. So if the significance probability is lower, then the, they are different, okay? Significance probability and the significance level. Second, significance level is something you choose, which is normally 10%, 1%, and 5%, okay? Significance probability come from your data. Once we have the data, actually, so sometimes we find the one tail, sometimes we find the two tail for two tail test. So the the tail probabilities are actually the significance probability. I think uh, later we may have uh, more things. So the example here is very. So this is our three quarters. So this is our observed data. It's our sample set. Oh, we can find that. Uh, the test of a two population mean. Uh, when the I think uh, the two population mean when the uh, sample variance is don't know is a t test, and uh, yeah, this is the example. Uh, when the even. Uh, this is quite simple. We want to test the two population mean, but we don't know the sample variance. All, all the uh, two population mean are not equal. In that case, there is no exact uh, you know, test. We can only have you know, approximate. So, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you should remember only under very few situations, we know the exact the distribution of the test statistic. Many times we don't know, uh, but we know the approximate distribution. In, there's another general general uh, capacity test that which is called likelihood ratio test. So I think we. Yeah, we, we, we will cover that. And so basically, we can end the two hypotheses. We can find the likelihood of uh, this hypothesis. We can find the uh, likelihood of this one as well. 
you think about that, you know. When the two hypotheses is, is you know, no big difference at all, the two two likelihood also should be similar. So if we find a ratio, the ratio should be around the one. If the two capacities have a big difference, let's see here. One is point one, but we we want to assume you know point one equal to three quarters. Then the two likelihood will make a much bigger difference. So there are that's a very general statistical test which you call the likelihood ratio test. For uh, you know for for it can be used everywhere actually. Okay, the F test, yeah, that's some example. So, as you can see, this also, you know, covered in some basic st statistics. Just give some of the more about the F test. This again is the binomial di distribution. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is test the two, actually for for maybe uh yeah for the two boxes. I I don't know the proportion black here. I don't know the proportion black there. I draw two samples. So I I want to come. I wanted to uh, uh, test the whether you know the the two boxes have a equal proportion of black. So before we talk about the, you know the uh, the proportion you know equal to a given value. Here we talk about uh, you know the uh, proportion of two uh, distribution whether they are equal or not. So you see a lot of tests, okay? But uh, in in reality, this is in reality. Some of them are the, like uh, like you go for dinner, <laughs> you can choose the you can choose the beef. You can choose a vegetable, you can choose whatever. Okay, the, 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 the p value. Okay, now we see a, a, a little bit of a p value which tell us, you know, the, it's the significance for the observed data, you know, to happen. Uh, many times, if we know the uh, distribution, we can find the, the p value. So the hypothesis test can be, you know, uh, uh, can be made by compare the p value with the significant level. If the p value is below the significant level, we should reject non hypothesis. Okay. If the significant probability is higher than the level here. We should uh, re reject it, okay? So there, uh, there's another concept called uh, you, 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 uh, uh, when the when the when this capacitance is right, and in that time we reject it. So we make a correct decision, okay? So that is called a statistical power. So let that 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 like here, we can test the h zero p equal to point seven seven five, and h a so for p are not equal. But we know it's equal point seven. Yeah, another case, H0 is still three quarters, but our alternative hypothesis actually is P equal to point one. So when when this is true, of course if we accept the data we make a we make a mistake. When this is true, but we reject it, we make a correct decision. Okay. So when this is true, and uh, we make a uh, reject the decision, which means this uh, this statement is uh, identified, or this difference is identified. 
So we call the data as statistical power. So it's still a probability. So which means, uh, you know, when the uh, uh, of course, in, 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 in another in another aspect, uh, when the non-capacity is a false, of course, with this means the alternative is is true. So we we reject it. So this one is called the the statistical power, which means one minus type two error. The statistical power is very important. You know, if the statistical power is low, it's very hard to to find it. So as you said, you know, we can guess the 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 the, the power to test this difference is much lower than the power to test this one. But this is a, it's, a, it's not that easy to test. The difference is a tiny. For this one, difference is large. It's much easier to test. So the statistical power is a high. But uh, sometimes, you know, something we can, we have, we have nothing to do with. Uh, whether the p is equal to 0 0.7 is 0 0.1, it's a reality. So, in, in practice, when we do the some study, especially in genetics, some genes have a bigger effect, some genes have a small effect. Of course, uh, by intu intuition, the bigger effect of the gene can be more easily to be identified. The small effect of the gene is very hard. But it doesn't mean that there's no gene at all. It's it, 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 it the effect that is too small, it can be easily modified by random error. So it can be easily missed. So this is it. No? Uh, so the, 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 the basically here you can see what can uh, uh, you know affect the statistical power. So the difference between two hypotheses make a big difference. Let's say we wanted to test the, the two mean. If the two mean they have a very tiny, tiny di difference, how we can find, find it? It also depends on the, 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 the type one error and the type two errors. So as you can see here, we, we have the, this is the sample mean, and this is the, when the non capacity is true, we have this distribution. If uh, the difference between the uh, the two capacities is the delta, so and the the delta, we know that when the delta is big, the power is high. When the delta is small, all the delta close to zero. You know, the, the, the two mean have no difference at all. So this is the, the, the larger the difference, the higher the power, you know, to to make the test. And also the standard error. So in this case, the standard error here is larger than the standard error here. And the difference between two population mean are the same. As you can see here, if we have the same R, so the beta here is much larger than the beta here. So the variance is also important. But we have seen that. What can reduce the variance? How we can reduce the sample variance? Yeah. So by increasing the sample sets, so the sample variance in the sample mean can be reduced. That's a very important concept that is statistics. Without enough sample sets, we cannot do good research. And the, 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 the level of the uh, significance, so when the level is small, the beta is large. When the level is large, the beta is small. So the two probability for one given data set cannot be reduced, uh, uh, you know, at the same time. If we want to reduce it at the same time, the only way is to increase the uh, the sample size. So how many replications? Basically, from here we can find out, you know, given a, a difference, 
how many replications do we have to identify that difference? So this, uh, uh, we don't spend much time about the, the you know, the how we, how, how we reach that, the, this formula. I hope you can understand that after that it, it, it is based on, you know, the critic value, temp one error, temp two error. So in this formula, the Z is the standard normal distribution, okay? Alpha is the type of one error. Beta is the, the statistical power. Sometimes, the, well, we wanted to see, I, I want to be 90% sure to detect that there's a difference. So this is it, okay? Sometimes you may think 90% is too low. I wanted to 99% sure to detect the, you know, this difference. So the third area is the difference between two population mean. The sigma here is the standard deviation. Beta is not the type two error. Beta is the type two error. Okay, so uh, everything about the capacity test is here. Type one error, type two error, the difference we wanted to test. As you, you, as you can see here, and the same power, I know if I test the least two capacity, we may only need a few sample sets. But for this one, you know that if the sample set is too small, well, we can, the, the estimation sometimes can be above this one, you know, then how we, how, uh, you know, how we can say, you know, this uh, uh, capacity is true. Okay, so hopefully after the class you can, uh, there are some uh, derivation, you know, it's all, everything here is about the probability, because the type one error, type two error, they are probability. The difference we want to do test, uh, you know, is get the difference of the two means. So here is the results. So if we want to test the like, favorable percent, uh, you know, that's the deviation, okay? Is the deviation and the alpha and the beta of course different alpha different beta different uh, you know the, the the set of difference we need a different number of sample sets. Let's say if we test the here, what's the difference here? The difference here is five percent. The difference here is about uh, you know uh, point six. So it will the point six here. But we we don't need too much sample. So the difference is just the, well, the difference is here, yeah, you need to make another another table, and there's there no one person. Uh, okay, so uh, basically the, uh, the statistician can tell you, you know, if you use this type one error, you use that type two error, uh, and uh, of course, to use these people, you need to guess what, what's the difference. You know, that's the basic some, uh, If you do the net, know that it's always very hard to tell you how many replication or how large sample size is needed. Uh, 